Well, good afternoon again from Green Sports Complex in Pratt, Kansas, and I'm Dick Anderson, and alongside of me, the head coach of the Pratt Community College Beavers, that is Eric Thompson. We call him E.T., <laughs> and you do it very respectfully because he's about seven foot, and we, <laughs> I don't want to get in a fight with him. So, yeah. no, Eric, glad to have you along with us again this afternoon. Been doing ball games with us here a lot during this summer, uh, especially ball games that he likes to watch uh, kids and, <laughs> and, and do some recruiting at. Uh, co Absolutely. Coach. This has been a great opportunity for us to see a lot of players from a lot of different areas that we wouldn't wouldn't normally get to see, and it's – right in our hometown, right in our backyard, and it's it's dang good baseball. All right, uh, let's give you a quick lineup here for Flandu, South Dakota. They'll lead it off for Tanner Anderson, the first baseman. He's number two. Number five is Austin Ross. He's the center fielder. Number 29 is Mitch Foster, the first baseman. Weston Hanson's the shortstop. He'll bat fourth. He's number 22. Number one is Jake Patterson, the catcher. Number 24 is Callan Bertram, the left fielder. Number 32, Mitch Hansen, the DH this afternoon. He'll bat in the seventh spot. Batting eighth is Ross Corton. He's the second baseman. Batting ninth and playing right field will be Austin Chase. Patrick Weedham will be the pitcher, and he will not bat because they have the DH involved. That is Fondue, South Dakota, who is uh, – in this winner's bracket. Now, La Crescent, Minnesota, if you were with us just a little bit earlier, won to get to this point. This is the championship game. Here's their starting lineup. They will lead off with number two, the second baseman, Zach Malstead. Uh, second, uh, batting second and playing center field, Eric Vaughn. Batting third, Jevin Dor Dorch Dorcher, I believe it is. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, right field, Hunter McCallison will be in left field, he's number 20. 48 is Caleb Kenzer, he's the first baseman. Matt Weezer is the shortstop, he's number 27. Number seven is Levi Massman, he's the pitcher. Uh, Dylan McCollin, McKinnon is the third baseman, he'll bat in the eighth spot, and Austin DeBeer will bat in the ninth spot, and he is the catcher. So that uh, is your starting lineups here for both teams as we get ready for this final game, the championship of the Midwest, of the mid-region of the American Legion Baseball Championships. And it's, uh, it's been a good one, huh, E.T.? Uh, you got a little bit of rain, but there's been some awful good baseball players in this stadium this weekend. There's been a lot of good players. And, you know, first got to give Bruce and his crew a whole lot of credit. They worked their tails off the last few days to, to get this thing rolling and, you know, the rain did good for the grass. The grass is green, and now the dirt's dry, and we, we've got some got some good baseball. And, and uh, you know, we talked about it the other day on the radio, and I'm, I'm the sports manager at KMMM Radio here in Pratt, and we're doing this with uh, the cooperation of the Kiowa County Media Center, and they've done a great job. My wife said she played, she watched the first game, and it was just, just beautiful, and I sounded too good, too, for her. I, <laughs> I imagine sure. she's a little bit prejudiced. Sure. But, but anyway, Coach, uh, athletes, boy, there's a lot of athletes in this in this. You know, they're, they're, and they're in all shapes. There's little fast guys. There's big bangers. You know, they're, they're hitting some balls over the over the fence, and there's, and there's you know, a lot of good arms. And, you know, when you get back to the back end of this tournament, you know, some of those number one arms are coming back through, and, and we're seeing those those dudes again, as, as we like to call them. Levi Massen, Massman is the pitcher, and there is ball two. Two balls, no strikes. The first hitter enters Tyler Anderson, Tanner Anderson, the third baseman for Fondu, South Dakota. Here we go. The wind and the pitch. And there's a strike call. What you've seen, I, I, I tell you, many ball players, as you say, in the comments that you've made to me all week long about the kind of athletes that are in this thing, it's, it's amazing, uh, what, you know, from from Texas, to, or excuse me, from Kansas to Nevada, high fly ball, by the way, and and it's an out. So, but uh, and as we look at all the athletes from the Midwest, uh, man, it, it's just been amazing how many really good athletes you see. Well, and and like like I, I, I've said earlier, I, you don't get a chance. I, I per se don't get a chance, or Pratt Community Baseball doesn't get a chance to go up to South Dakota or Minnesota and Wisconsin to recruit, and this is just bonus land for us when they when they come to us all right and now ross austin ross the center fielder steps up his first time up no balls one strike here's the pitch and that's fouled off for strike two 
Boy, this this has been a beautiful day for baseball. It, it's kind of got a high clouds, and there's supposed to be some more rain move in the area tonight. But man, what a great day for baseball this has been. Uh, it, it's it's so unseasonally unseasonably cool. You you know, like I've told some of these people from out of town about this time last year, we're in the middle of a month long triple digit heat wave that you couldn't buy a a speck of rain, and and it's beautiful, beautiful. Well, they're swinging and miss, and there's a uh, strikeout, so now there are two down, and then Austin Ross goes down. Mitch Foster comes up, the first baseman, another right-handed guy, and there is strike one call. Levi Mossman is, is doing a great job filling it up. He's he's coming right at the hitters and, and throwing strikes and, and working with a good tempo, working fast. The wind and the pitch, and looked like a little curveball fouled off. Down the third base side, right at the trailer. And right off your car, Dick. Oh, was it really? Yeah, I don't think it got a window. Got your, your uh, right, front fender. A white Tahoe? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe K Jake Cherokee got a mat set on my fender then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I had it parked out in the parking lot one night. Jake Cherokee hit it with a foul ball. And there's Maybe you got a bullseye on it. <laughs> I guess so. One ball, two strikes. With two outs here, top half of the first inning. This is Fondue. South Dakota, boy, that thing, and they're located way up there. Yeah, they're almost in. Well, South, yeah, the yeah. North Dakota team was about 20 miles south of the border, so. Yeah. <laughs> Foul ball for Foster. And just getting started, top of the first inning. The wind by Massman, and there's a grounder out to second base, Melbourne. Now Malmstead picks it up and throws him out, so. That'll one, take, two, three inning. You, you like that kind, don't you? As a pitching pitcher, I, I like those one, two, three innings. Oh, the one, two, three inning. Then we go to the dugout, and the Crescent, Minnesota will come up. Zach Mulbestad will bring it up when we come back out of the break. You're listening to American Legion Baseball and watching. ITC operates, builds, and maintains the electric transmission in We are working hard to improve electric reliability and increase electric transmission capacity throughout our operations across the Midwest. ITC, we're your energy superhighway. Hey, we're back in Green Sports Complex, Smoky Ford Field. Glad to have you with us. Bottom of the first inning here at the Mid-States mid Regional Tournament. This is as far as the AA goes. They have regional tournaments. The AAA, which is 21 and younger, they go on to a World Series, and that's, in, I believe, in North, uh, North Carolina somewhere, but I don't remember exactly. But uh, yeah. the next step up, they go there. And the single A has a, uh, just goes to the state level and does not go to the regional. So... We'll uh, get ready to go here, and Zach Bostad will lead it off. Eric Vaughn will be in on deck circle. He'll be coming up next. He's the center fielder. Now, Bostad played in that last game. Had a good, pretty good ball club. Yes, they are, and, you know, this team out of South Dakota – Definitely has the has the advantage from a pitching standpoint for not playing, you know, games already this morning. They should be a little fresher than than uh, the Minnesota guys. And there is a hit by Zach, and it's picked up by the shortstop. A low throw, and they got it. Good pickup by the first baseman over there. Saved him a run. So the ground out, and there's one down. Mitch Foster at first base. Ross Cotlin at second base. Weston Hanson's the shortstop. Tanner Anderson's the third baseman. Zach Patterson behind the plate. Colin Bertram in left. Austin Ross in center. And Austin Chase in right. Outside pitch, ball one. He kind of showed, showed bunt there. He's, he's looking to possibly drag for a base hit down the third base line. On a left-hander. And it is called strike. So there's ball one, strike one. 
or strike two, I should say, yep. my fault. And there's strike three and with the breaking ball. <laughs> he just kind of set him up there with a couple of fastballs and then threw him a hook ball and then just got him by. That's the name of the game. You 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 go hard, soft, hard, soft, hard, soft, and you, the hitter has a hard time getting in any kind of rhythm, and it's exactly what he did there. Devin Dorshire, the right fielder, steps up. There's strike to him. Boy, the umpires have been pretty steady. Good, and they've been, you know, they've had some really close calls. I feel like this has been an outstanding umpiring crew that we've had here for four days. Well, this is this is a great crew, and, you know, Renner, Tim Renner kind of um, schedules them and, and leads the charge with them, and these guys are, you know, do a good job of keeping the game under control and being consistent with the balls and strikes. You know, it's one of those things, being an umpire, you're not going to make everybody happy. That's the name of it. And there's a curve ball, but he slaps it down the third baseline, and Tanner Anderson picks it up, so it was at the first for the out. So both uh, both teams go one, two, three here in the top of the inning and the bottom of the inning. So we go to the top of the second inning. Coming up will be Weston Hansen uh, when we come out of the break. South Dakota and Minnesota playing in the finals. We'll be right back. Mid-America Ag Network, your partner in agriculture, on your radio, on your computer, on your phone. The trusted source for market information and ag news since 1977. When you need to know, we are here. Mid-America Ag Network, most reliable, most trusted, most respected, midamericaagnetwork.com. Mm -hmm. All right, we are back. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You can help out anytime you want to, trailer. <laughs> oh, life stuff. Don't you just yeah. love it? It's kind of weird for me, first time on here, hearing the little voices in my ear that, that, that's <laughs> yeah. not you. Yeah, exactly. All right, we are back, as Grant said. <laughs> oh, well, you know, hey, we have a good time doing this, and uh, we try to be, and, and boy, what a sharp picture this is. In my, We got a little monitor up here, and man, these guys at HD, and we got a guy on each one of the dugouts, one out in the outfield, and there's a young lady right above us. And I say above us, like about 25 foot in the air. Yeah. So and I, uh, I found myself watching the little monitor over there as much as I'm watching the real game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's the young man over on the dugout on the, on the third base side. And lead it off here will be Weston Hanson, the shortstop. Jake Patterson will be the catcher. He'll be up next. And Hanson, the shortstop, the right-handed hitters, and he... Looks at Stryer, excuse me, pulled back strike one. It's amazing to me how well these kids, uh, and I'm saying and a lot of them are really experienced baseball players, even though they're 15 to 19 years old, but they, they just have the discipline that you need at the plate, Coach. And you never saw that. Boy, when I was a kid, I went up there and hacked at everything. <laughs> it's, they've, they've done a good job. You can tell they've played a lot of baseball, which is – you know, when when you're up north and it's cold, you know, they don't get the opportunity to play as much as some of those teams from down south, and they, they've done a good job with, with you know, playing with fundamentals and playing hard and playing right. Two balls, one strike on the hitter. Because we think it's cold here in the winter. How would you like to live up by Canada? Uh -uh. I grew up up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite that far north. Pulls that one right through the hole at first and third for a base hit. So we we'll have a runner at first base here. And Weston will be standing down at first base. Good patient hit there, wasn't it, Coach? Yeah, he got the pitch that he wanted, got it to a 3-1 count, I believe it was, and, and got the fastball that he wanted, elevated a little bit, put a good swing on it, and solid base hit between the shortstop and the third baseman. The catcher, Jake Patterson, is coming up. Colton. Interesting to see what we do here. Are we going to get into some to some small ball and, and try to bunt them over, steal, or are we going to play it straight up? And we're going to play it straight up, yeah, it looks this, like. Well, I, this is Jake Patterson, and I've seen this kid play, and he swings the bat really well. Yeah, he's not looking to maybe just move a runner. He's looking to hit it up to the berm up there. Yep. 
And Colin Bertram will be up next, and he's another one that swings the bat well. So neither one of the, the, the kids off this Mondu team won in the home run hitting contest, but uh, I tell you, they, they've been slapping the round ball around pretty well, the South Dakota team. 0-1 oh, the count. Top of the second inning, no score. Had a thriller in the earlier one, and it went six innings. They were playing five, and that to shorten this up a little bit. And he's going to go around, I believe. Yes, yep. he does. That's a hard pitch to lay off of. You know, as a pitcher, sometimes with two strikes, you'll try to elevate the pitch right in the hitter's eye where it looks good and big and fat. And once they realize it's out of the strike zone, they can't stop their swing. There Run goes the runner, and it's going to be mishandled, and it's ball four. Or did it hit him? It hit him because that was an 0-2 count. Yep. Threw that breaking ball, the runner took off, and, and the hitter did a good job of sitting in there, taking one for the team, as they say. <laughs> yep. Now, if you'd have done, if you even kind of lean towards it, the umpire won't give it to you. But yep, you, you don't. You don't have. They always say he's got to make an attempt to get out of the way. You don't have to make an attempt to get out of the way. You just can't make an attempt to get hit. Now, runners oh. at first and second, and then. He almost hit the other runners, and runner at second base took off. And that was a great play by the catcher because he lost sight of that ball and went behind the left-handed hitter's backside. Made a blind catch there. So now there's runners at first and third. And one ball on the one, uh, yeah, batter was Colin Bertram. That's ball one. Mitch Hansen and the DH will be up next. The catcher's getting quite a workout here. This inning, a couple ball behind the hitter and a ball in the dirt with runners at third base. He's doing a good job of keeping the runners from advancing on a wild pitch. That stretch and the pitch, and it's another an, block, another block, and another ball. Tell you what, catchers have to be excellent athletes. I should have said what I played before I said that. <laughs> we all know you're. A catcher, I was a catcher. Dad. Yes, I was. You know, you, you can't, you can't. You can always tell because that your old finger, catchers, your fingers yeah. are all banged up. And he took ball four there, but, you know, the, the catcher is just is as important as your shortstop or anybody else. you got to have a good catcher there that's smart, knows the game, can block, can throw, you know, have a good temperament. you got to have a good relationship with the umpires. And, you know, maybe he's having some good conversation with Brad McDonald down there to make get him a strike later on in the game. That's Coach Muller catchers to do anyway. Coach Muller's headed out. Talked to this young man earlier. He he's a head baseball coach at at uh, Crescent High School. He also is the head volleyball coach. So he's got quite the skill well, set. Then yes, he does. He said he got. And volleyball practice tomorrow starts at 8 o'clock, he said. Ooh. <laughs> Is he going to be home by 8 o'clock? Uh, they better, I don't think they, so. they better uh, not, not stop then. Well, the Hopefully base, he's got somebody to drive for him. Yep. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Nobody still. out here. Boy, they can put a whipping on it right here if they can just get going, and that one low in the dirt too. So all of a sudden, game, uh, Levi Massman can't find – the strike zone. One over the count. And that one just misses for 0-2. 2 -0. Two balls, no strikes. We haven't seen a strike out of him for a while. Now that, uh, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five in a row now. There's another pitch, and now it's six in a row. That, oh, he got the strike call on that one. Sorry about that. Ball is high in the strike zone, but hard to tell how. This kid here is uh, built like a guard or a tackle on your football team, and yep. he looks like he's strong from his waist up. And he looks strong from his waist down as yeah, well. Yeah, he does. He's got, yeah. some, he's got some big, big legs, legs. Three balls, one strike on the hitter. Power from his shoes to his elbows. Yep, and that's ball four. They're going to walk a run in here. So they'll walk the first run in, and it's a one to nothing game here in the top of the second inning. This will go seven innings in this one. They've yeah. been playing five, trying to shorten up, shorten up the time span since we we've had all the rain. Yeah, we lost a full day there on Friday. The wind and the pitch to strike one right at the letters. So oh and one to count. 
Juan Doe, or D E or F F L A A N D E A U Juan Doe. I read, that's how they say it. South Dakota. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Bases are still loaded. One is walked across, and he fouls this one down the third base side. Uh oh. Did I hear a clunk? No, you that one. That one's a little <laughs> short of your your car. I'll, I'll I'll keep you. I'll give you a heads keep up. Keep me advised, there, coach. You need to sneak your truck right up against that big trailer there. <laughs> and that one just misses. One ball, two strikes. Good pitch, you know, and an even better job of letting it go. You know, must a little low, a little outside, but it was a tough pitch to lay off of. The right-hander Massman winds it. Here comes the pitch. There's a ground ball short. They're going to see if they can turn two. They got one, and they do not turn two. They throw the ball by. Two runs are going to come across. They get the force at second, but two runs will come in on that play. There's a ground ball. You know, the shortstop did a good job of giving the second baseman a good feed. It was just, you know, the, the grass is still a little tall here from all the rain, and, and it was a slow roller. It's one of those balls you, 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 you love the second baseman's uh, effort to try to turn the double play, but I don't know if he really had a chance at him. It's one of those you just kind of put in your pocket and, and take the force out and, and not allow another run to score. And they'll hit Vance on the show error that went – into right field. So now Austin Chase, the right-hander, comes up. Patrick Weedham, the pitcher, will be next. Yeah, he's looking. He, he squared the bunt early there. You wonder if he's trying to sack him over to, to third base. or With one out, would you do that? Would I sacrifice? No. no. He, no. May be, he may be doing it for a base hit. I can I, I I could get behind that you know if he's if he's a really good runner and can can handle the bat but I I also think with the runner at second you're base hit away from scoring him as it is. But these coaches know their personnel a whole heck of a lot better than we do. Yeah, that's true. You can't really you can tell a situation, but you can't tell what they're going to do it. <laughs> Let's right. put it that way. You know, it, you don't you don't see it a lot. Sacrifice bunting with with one out. You know, and, and like I said, unless he was looking to to drag bunt. Well, this is the second trip at, uh, to the mound, so Levi Maston will vacate the bump, and I th the coach come out and said, "Yay, hey, it's all right. We just we'll just go to somebody else, see what happens." And Levi said, "I can't throw a strike to this guy." <laughs> <laughs> Most pitchers will tell you that, coach, when you go out there, the strike zone's not right or something. Right, it's not their fault. Yeah, yeah, that's all. It can be kind of. They've got every day. Sometimes they can have a lot of excuses when you go out there and hit that mound, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ought to know you've walked out uh, to the mound a lot I've of times. made a lot of trips out there, and they want to, you know, and, and it never fails. Just about every time they, they try to fight you and want to stay back in the game, they try to talk you into letting them stay. John Grewal will come in. they'll make this next pitch. They'll, we'll get this next one, Coach. We'll get this next one. That's what they like to say. <laughs> so John Grewal will come in, and it looks like – uh, let's see, Masterman went out. Masterman went out uh, to the oh, outfield. I think he right. went to right. So we'll put him in right for right now. And while he's uh, another right-hander, John Goholt comes up. Patrick Weedham, who is the pitcher, will come up or, as soon as they get done with their. Practice tosses here. Yep. You're supposed to, I think you get seven pitches when you come in, you know, in between innings or when you come right off the field like this. They give you seven and and get you going. And that's a hard thing to do sometimes, especially when he came out from playing the outfield. You you know, your arm's obviously warm, but you haven't, you haven't made any pitches. You get seven pitches here to see what you got working. Is my fastball where I want it to be? Is my breaking ball where I want it to be? Do I have a change up? You got to. Figure out what's in the what's in the what's in your arsenal real quick. And see if you remember to throw a ball what is that? Hey, what is the pitcher mound? Sixty five feet, sixty two feet. feet or sixty, 60 feet, feet, two six inches. In, six yeah. inches. Sixty six feet, inches. six inches. 
That's all. You, you know, know, when you're throwing from the outfield, your release point's a lot higher, making longer throws, and, and now you're throwing from an elevated mound, trying to throw downhill at 60 feet, 6 inches. Well, one out here after the force play at second when they tried to turn the double. Now you got two on. Patrick Weedham is the pitcher. Whoop, he, I had, he is not batting, so I got to change that, and that'll go to the top of the order. That's my fault. We'll get that straightened out. Got to yeah. You got all this big time technology right here. Yeah, it's, right. Now I, I can still mess it up, believe me. <laughs> no, on that one. Okay, and now we go to the top of the order and just Tanner Anderson, the third baseman. He flew out his last time up. The right field. Yeah, and these these La Crescent, Minnesota guys, they've you can tell that they're maybe getting towards the back end of their pitching, you know, after playing as many games as they've had to play. Had to come through, play a few extra games coming out of the loser's bracket. Ball four, and that's a four, four ball walk. So the bases are gonna be loaded again. You know, that's one of those deals where you wanna make sure that, you know, your, your middle infielder knows that we're gonna turn a double play up the middle, or if we get a ground ball back to the first baseman or third baseman, we're gonna go to four back to one and your pitcher's got to know that when the ball comes to him, he's going to four first. That pitch, here comes the bat, and then that's a grounder. To, they're going to get the out for sure, and it's going to score the run, but they now have two outs. That's the, that's the safe play right there. Yeah, it, it's it's exactly what it is, the safe play. If that ball's hit a little bit, a little bit harder, he may have had, you know, especially with him having to come in, he may have had a play at the plate, but, you know, Slow roller like that, you want to make sure and get one out. All right, uh, Mitch Foster now stands in. Weston Hansen will be next to the shortstop. There's the breaking ball in there for strike one. John Galt just has thrown eight pitches, 4-4, four, four, so uh, about 500 right now, Coach. Four to nothing, and there's a long fly ball left field. That's it's in the gap. the gap. That's going to be a long ways out there. That hits the fence. That's going to be a stand-up double, and that'll empty the bases around. So all of a sudden, Londu just is all over the place. Put a good swing on that. Took that breaking ball before and got the fastball that he wanted. It was elevated a little bit and, and put a good swing on it and filled that left center field gap. Well, that might not work. <laughs> I was trying to, this door's kind of flying open because the wind's blowing a little harder, and and uh, we'll see if we can't get it to stop that. And then it blows right in the microphone. There we go. Now you got two down. The runner at second base is Foster. This is Weston Hansen. He singled his first time up. Jake Patterson will be next. That pitch swung on and in the dirt. So Another good, or that's a good breaking ball there. Hitter was committed to it early. He was, by the look of his swing, he was thinking fastball and ball hit the dirt and he was already swing committed. Now it's six to nothing. It's a jump on top here. There's, there's a run rule and now he's going to hit a batter. Boy, they had three or four of them hit the last game. So there's runners at first and second now. And there's still two down. And I believe it's 15 after three and eight after five, if I remember right. We'll check with the official here. Yeah, I'm not sure. They've, they've done some changes with the run rules in the innings. I'm not quite sure. Just 10 out. I'm just getting 10 after stuff. four and eight after eight five. five. Okay. Just letting you know that in case. Looks like we need to use heading it. that way. <laughs> well, it can change. Oh, uh, this this game will. Once you think you got it figured out, something will happen. It'll it'll change your change everything. You know, shoot, we've seen, we've seen two two out, two strike home runs to put games in extra innings. Yeah. Or it's been, you know, the 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 kids are a lot of times responding to a whole lot of pressure and and coming through. I have one ball, two. I have two balls, one strike. And on the hitter, Jake Patterson. Here's the pitch. 
And it's in the dirt and gets away from the catcher, so everybody's going to move up one on the wild pitch. Pitcher, catcher's done a great job keeping balls in front of him, and, and that breaking ball just got away from him. Actually, I think the count's 3-0. That's what the umpire just told us, and okay. we're making another mound visit here. That is uh, the assistant coach headed out there, so he's got, if the coach comes out the next time, he's going to be hunting for another pitcher here. <laughs> so it, it's kind of that way. As, it, as uh, he, he said, once you get to these finals and you got four pitchers that you use, uh, then, and then after the, the last day, I mean, on the last day, depending on how much you pitch and when you pitch, you get f a fresh start. Yeah, you know, and. So many innings is all they allow these younger kids to hit the pitch in them right. the weekend. And, and I, I I really like those pitching limits. It, it kind of protects the kids and it protects the coaches. You know, you always want to win games, but at the but at the the bottom line is to is to keep these kids healthy and and to not do anything to jeopardize their health and their careers. Three over the count. Here's the pitch. <laughs> He was he was taking that one all the way because yeah. that was not a hearty swing. Oh, that was uh, he knew it was going to be a strike, and the coach gave him a three zero take sign. I don't know if 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 I'm the five hole hitter and it's three zero with runners at se second and third. Oh, well, he must. I'm, I may I may green light him and know if you get your pitch here, let's let's put a good swing on it. May not get a better pitch than that. We know a guy that didn't care what you had if he had three and zero or zero and one or zero and zero and. It was the first pitch of the ball game. He'd take a swing. It was yes, he, he would. And that ball is hit out into center field. That's going to score two more runs. For the single brings home two. And now it makes it eight to nothing. And there's still two down here. The guy we were talking about played for E.T. and Ryan Schmidt over at Pratt Community College. His name was Skyler Angood. It and it didn't matter. You could you could throw a take sign at him, and he'd still take a swing at it, wouldn't he? And it would frustrate you, but but, gosh, but dang it, half the most of the time he'd yeah he put in a gap somewhere. Hit over 300 in his career in junior uh, over way yeah, over 300 he, in high school and way over 300 in college. His sophomore year, he hit three or I'm sorry, hit four four twenty thirty something. He was a First team All American in, in junior college, and they only take well, top twelve. Yep. But he he put up some huge huge numbers. I mean, we we were in a tie ball game to go to the to go to the final four two years, and he hits a two run home run to to put us in the final four. High fly ball and foul territory. McKinnon picking it up in third base, and he's got it for the out. So the, the pop fly out, and they finally get out of the inning, but it cost him eight runs. Eight runs on three hits, no errors. They'll leave one on the base pads. We'll be back right after this. We'll see if Lucerne can get to going. We'll be back on the... BTI is your local John Deere dealer in Buckland, Greensburg, Ness City, and Pratt. And we're not just about the sale. We're here for you after the sale, too. Because at the end of the day, we're still all about you. Come see us at BTI John Deere in Buckland, Greensburg, Ness City, or Pratt. Well, there we are. Mid-States AA American Legion Championship. And uh, this is the second time the, it's been here in Pratt. It was back, it was here in 2008, and uh, Las Vegas won it then. Yep, that was my, I. Uh, that was your first year here, yep, wasn't it? Actually, I was coaching out in Massachusetts in the summer, and, and, uh, and as, as I was coming into town, Ryan Schmidt was up probably right where I'm sitting doing the radio <laughs> with you, and I texted him telling him I'm, I'm heading in, and. He told me he was on the radio with you watching Las Vegas play. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and we go to the inning, at the bottom of the inning, eight to nothing. South Dakota. 
So we will. There's another change being made out in the outfield here. We still got number one pitching. Did he start? And eight. And eight is went out to left field. We'll we'll find out who this is. <laughs> uh, Grant. Uh, there you go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Right-handed hitting, Austin McCullison brings up and. We'll see if LaCresse in Minnesota, that's, that's this is a, you gotta see if they can answer. They need to at least try to scratch one, or scratch a few across here. They got the four, five, and six hole hitters coming up. That's Hunter them. McCallison and 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 uh, Kaiser and, and Weezer. So they, and that the middle of the lineup is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Two balls, no strikes. That's where you put your RBI guys. Now you just gotta get on base and get them around. Patrick Windham throws the strike. Two Swung balls. over the top of a good breaking ball there. Two balls, two strikes on the hitter. He'll step back in. Here's the pitch. The curve ball just misses. Didn't quite pull it down enough. Stayed up. Good job laying off of it. Hey, I like this uh, guy. I like the way this guy comes over the top, but he that one there it looked like he just he tried to throw it so hard that it just died, went down on him and would stay there. Yeah, that's the last thing you want from a from a pitcher when you when you put up eight runs is to is to walk the leadoff guy. There's no way to there's no defense for a walk, Dick. No. And it walk if usually it, occurs into a run, doesn't it? And now we got a pinch runner. Right. So now pitch run for the catcher. There's no he's a left fielder, so he can re enter. So now Caleb Kaiser comes out. I saw this kid hit a home run the other night that cleared both the fences, Coach. <laughs> this guy can whack the ball. He, he almost, Walmart's just up the road from this place, and I, I, I swear that ball landed in the parking lot. You may want to watch out while you're driving through Taco Bell. You may get yeah, ball yeah, you might, watch. yeah. In order to go, baseball <laughs> yeah. in the window. And he put a good swing on it, just missed it. Yeah, up in the air it went, and Ross Anderson out in center field takes care of that one for the out. You know, he was right on time with it. Hit it right up the middle of the field. Just missed it. Do you find most hitters, and like high school hitters that come to the junior college and have a tendency to try to swing hard at every ball? Yes. <laughs> did, yes. I, did I guess uh, that it, one right? Huh? You know, and, and you get a lot of, you know, the, the pitching's a lot uh, a lot better in college, and, and – you know, they, they try to pull and yank and hit everything. And, you know, a lot, a lot of those high school hitters can be successful that way. And, and as the competition gets better in college and they're able to locate the pitch and throw their breaking their curveballs and sliders and change-ups, you got to learn how to hit the ball to all fields. Ball one on the hitter. This is Matt Weiser. And I'll the shortstop you, and Levi Massman is next. All those big Pratt bangers that we've had over the years, they're, they're you know, just – Perfect example of them. And why they're going to try to turn the double play, and they got it. So they got the double play. Taylor made 6-4-3 double play. It, it was. It was a good one, too, boy. That That's pretty sharp when you watch that. that, that if, when they can get that done, that it takes the cake, I believe me. It's so, the pitcher's best friend. Yeah. And the 6-4 play double play gets out of the inning, and it's 8 to nothing. We'll be right back after this. at a new 2014 Chevrolet Impala, you look at a totally new design and performance package that will turn your head. Sitting in the seat will make you feel like you're in command of a fighter jet. The interior rewards your desire for excellence, and the power under the hood will amaze you. Come by today to see the all-new Chevrolet Impala for 2014 at Doug Ray Chevrolet at 1501 East 1st in Pratt. We do business your way at Doug Ray. Find new roads. Ford. Smoky Ford Field in uh, Pratt, Kansas. That's where we're at. Welcome in. I'm Dick Anderson along with Eric Thompson. Eric Thompson, the head coach of the Pratt Community College Beavers. I just happen to be the sports 
director at the radio station, so I do a lot of stuff with this young man sitting next to me, and I'm looking, really looking forward to it. First year head coach over there, by the way, and as he takes over that program, and he's been there about five years. Yep, I've been here. I was an assistant coach for five years and just finished my first year as a head coach. Heading into year number two. Well, you know, and, and I, I have to say it, he, he married the, the head basketball coach. So <laughs> that means that's a, that's a pretty neat deal when the both you get the, and now got a little cute little kid. To, it's about a year old, and he, yeah. I, I saw him throw baseball the other day, and he he's, just about made it a home plate. He's, he's getting there. He's, you know, <laughs> it's a good thing. You call him a cute kid. It's a good thing he looks like his mama and not his dad. Uh, I, just, I just tell everybody if he – he looks like his mama and is tall like me and is tough like his mama will be okay. <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. As uh, Mitch Hansen will lead it off, the designated hitter for Wandu, North Dakota or South Dakota. Ross Corkin will be next. He's the second baseman, and then Austin Chase. There's your first three as we come up to the bottom of the or the top of the inning, top of the three inning. Eight runs on three hits, no errors. Two and one left on for the Fondu team. Fond, Flan, Flandu, there we go. They uh, they got some boys on this team that can swing the bat a little bit. Wow, I mean, and and they're and they're not small kids. No, no. <laughs> I mean, even if you're small, if you swing the bat well, you can hit it. You can hit it good. But these guys are just. You know, they just look like power guys. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. That's the great thing about baseball. It doesn't discriminate by size. You, know, you got little Dustin Pedroia playing, playing for the Red Sox, playing against the Royals this week. He's the littlest guy in the big leagues, and he he can hit it a mile just like the big boys can. And I think the Royals were leading the last time we looked, weren't they? They were up 4-1 to one last I looked. Over Boston? Four yep, more. getting ready to win a series here. Yeah. Uh -oh, one and it's one. Four to 4-3 now. The Royals are up up one. A long high fly ball, straightaway center field. Vaughn going back, and he's got a nice play there by Eric Vaughn in center field. He had to chase that one down as that was a well-hit ball right to straightaway center field. Did a great job, you know, fundamentally speaking. Did a nice drop step over his left shoulder and turned and ran and didn't, you know, didn't really kind of float with it. He turned and ran and, and made a great play. Covered a lot of ground out there. Now stepping in, Ross Corton. Horton got on on an errors last time up. Austin Chase will be next for his team out of South Dakota. 0 for 1 on the day. Here comes the wind up in the pitch from Gruholt. And he misses for ball two. This uh, John, he, he, all of a sudden he looks like he is really kind of there he got a little better rhythm on that throw than he did that other one. Wow. He kind of fell off to the side. And that, you know, you, you thought that the, he was headed north or something. <laughs> Two balls yeah, you, and a strike. You said the magic word there. Pitching has to do with a lot of rhythm, and it's and it's such a, it's such a, you know, repetitive motion. You got to do the same thing over and over and over with, with rhythm. And he, he's looked through a couple good pitches there in a row. Yeah, he got himself in trouble back in that second inning. He hit a batter, and then he walked two in a row, and then had an error, and then walked another one. Well, that was the one, the guy before him. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. And then he came. Then this, and then he came in and has not done a too bad a job. He's got. He's thrown 26 pitches now, with 12 balls, 14 strikes. I'd like to have a little better ratio than that, but. Yeah. You know, at least uh, he's yeah. keeping it around the strike zone. You know, it's funny. Everybody seems to think pitching's easy. Uh, don't get it. up on the mound and do it. It's not as easy as you think. Yep. Ball and four just missed down and away. McCorton on the base with one out. And now comes Austin Chase, the number nine hitter in the lineup. We'll go to the top of the order next, and that's Tanner Anderson. Turn. Still a pretty nice crowd here this evening. I mean, there's a lot of people that have already left because they got a long ways to travel, but you got a couple of teams here. And then there's some local people that just came out to watch the team and they live here in Pratt. Well, it's a nice day and it's a nice park and, it, and it's good baseball. It's a, uh, what else are you going to do on a Sunday afternoon? Mow my lawn, maybe. <laughs> Listen to the baseball yeah. game. 
Do what? Oh, my pen. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I get to playing with my pen here, and it starts clicking, and I guess these microphones you. pick it up. One ball, one strike. So now, Chase. Got a lot of ones across the scoreboard there. Number right. 11 up, one, one count, one out. Play some poker, shall we? Yeah. Looks like that one was strike two. One ball, two strikes now. Runner at first base, eight to nothing. Mondu saw Dakota leads. That'll be pulled to the second baseman. They're going to try to turn two. They got one. And Holy cow, they, they got a left-handed shortstop. Out yeah. There. That looked funny. Yep. And that's, uh, let me tell you who he is, because I, I didn't know, not notice that until just now, and that's Eric Vaughn. That shortstop. Oh, they they called a. They called they the double could, play. Well, they or, called the double play because of the slide at second base. He didn't slide. You've got to, you've got to slide right right into the bag. You know, in the big leagues, you can go out and try to take him out. In 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 college and high school, you got to slide right into the base. And if they think that there was an an intent to to break up the double play, they're gonna call them both out. And it looks like that's what happened here. Oh, well, he got caught. I mean, he was out on the double. Yeah. You got you have to slide right into the base. You can't go outside to, to try to knock down a, a defender. All right, so that'll take care of that. And I can't uh, can't tell you how that <laughs> hey, boy I, I you just can't uh you got to play within yourself right here in this championship game. That's for yep. sure. 8 to nothing, especially when you got an 8 nothing lead. Yep. 8 nothing lead. We'll be back right after this. This is American Legion Baseball. Here we are, Pratt, Kansas, the city of Pratt. Boy, you know, uh, for 6,000 people, we have a beautiful parks, great shopping downtown. They're building another new motel. They built two new, two new motels here in town, not, uh, and building another one across the, from it now. And uh, just a nice place to live. New high school, junior college. It uh, is. And one of the best, Pratt Regional Medical Center is one of the best in the state. Oh, no, so, no question. So uh, that's what we got right here in Pratt, Kansas. But if you're outside the area and want to know about it, strike one to the hitter, and that is Levi Massman. Dylan McKinnon is next. And then Austin DeBoer. And the pitch, and it's pulled foul. So now, maybe I'm wrong, but let's, let's uh, the Crescent, Minnesota looks a little more uh, get after it type of it, at the plate right now than they they were kind of laying back. But as you say that, they take strike three yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It was a it good was a good pitch. curveball though. You know, and and you know, there's two schools of thought. Either you gotta either you start being really really aggressive and start to bang it around, or 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 you start to you know maybe take some pitches and see if you can get the starting pitcher out and, and draw some walks. Now um, the left-handed Austin. McKellen steps up. And that is ball one. Ball one. I wondered if he maybe hit it with his bat, but he did nope. not. And there's strike one called. Right on the inside part of the plate. That's what. You like pitchers to be able to throw inside. That makes hitters uncomfortable. Oh, there's a big hook ball. That's Woo. what you call the old back foot curveball. <laughs> it starts in the strike zone and ends up right on your back foot, and it's hard not to swing at. One and two the count, and there's a swing and a miss for strike three. This guy's got a rolling coach. He looks like he's really in a rhythm right now. He's he's throwing it where he wants to and 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 pitching with great tempo and throwing the ball over the plate and keeping these these guys off balance. 
Patrick Wedham, who we're talking about. He's 26 total pitches, 18 strikes, and eight balls. So he's Did you say 18 and eight, 18 and nine now. After yeah, that 18 one? and nine. That's kind of that's kind of what you'd like to see there. Yes, he's in is. the third inning, and I know we've talked about it before. 12 pitches an inning is about where you'd like to have him. Well, he's less than that. I, in a perfect world, I'd like him to be three pitches an inning. <laughs> they can pitch all day that way. Yep. You've had some good ones at Pratt Community College, I'll tell you. Yes, we have. We've been very fortunate. There's another strike called. A lot of good, hardworking kids. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the windup and the pitch, and then that ball is laced to left field, and left fielder trapped yeah, it. Trapped it. Well, caught it right off the hop. Made a good effort. So that's a risky play there. You don't. You, you die for it, and it bounces. You know, that thing gets by him when he's laying on his belly. That guy can get all the way to third base, possibly even get all the way around. That's the first hit of the day, as well as only the second base runner. The other one was with a walk. Zach Melbost. Melbost. Boasted, I believe it was Mel Boaster. There we go. Go over the first kind of nonchalantly. Melbastad. Mel Meldestad. There we go. I don't know why I got that mixed up. I've said it twice already, and it's pretty. I said it good the first two <laughs> times. <laughs> two down. There's a high fly ball center field. That one's tagged, but you know what? Austin Ross is going to run it down out there. Good job, by Austin. Oh, out there in center field. That takes care of this one. They can't get a run home, and uh, it is still an eight to nothing ball game. We'll take a break. We'll come back. American Legion Baseball here on the Internet site. Brought to you by Kiowa County Media Center. We'll be back. I hear you. <laughs> well, again, Pratt, Kansas, Smoky Ford Field. There, the Pratt Recreation Department puts this put this thing together. And Bruce Pinkle, we talked to him in that early ball game, and you could think of a better guy, better man to name this name this field after than old Smoky. Yeah, we talked a little bit about Smoke, and my goodness, he was he was uh, a main staple in the community in baseball for a long, long time and actually got the program started in the American Legion post-86 here in town. It's been uh, behind him for a long, long time, a lot of years. And uh, nine state championships the Pratt 86ers have, eight of them under smoke. So that, uh, you know, that's been a huge, you know, the, the program that, that, that Smokey started and, and you know, Spencer took it over for him these last few years. It's it's been a huge a huge help for Pratt Community College baseball. We've we've had several kids off this off this Legion team that have you know from Pratt, Medicine Lodge, Haviland, Ashland, you know, all over the place that have come in and and you know shoot been all conference players, all region players, all American players. It's it's it it's it's quite the program. Well, Ty, uh, Tanner Anderson, leadoff hitter, will come up and strike one to him. Austin DeBoer's first pitch right on the outside part of the plate. Austin Ross will be next, and then Mitch Hot Foster. The wind and the pitch, it's low into the dirt for ball one. One ball, one strike. Yeah, smoke, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I still, I, you know, we talk about it a lot, and, and, I, and as I said, that ball is – out of the strike zone, by the way, and it's two balls and one strike. 
Every every spring when I walk down in that dugout for the first time, I hear Smokey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, it's time to play baseball. <laughs> that's what he said. Basketball that, and football are just kind of what you yeah, do between baseball. That's what season. you do when you, when you don't have any <laughs> baseball to play, you go play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and you you shouldn't forget to to mention Marlene. What a great oh, lady yes, she is. Yes, she was. Maybe she was the one person that's every seen. ball game. She's an Ooh. amazing lady. She works up at the school with us, works in her mailbox. And I'll tell you what, she spoke, she followed Smoke around a lot. They were married a long time. And I believe Smokey was about 86 when he passed away here a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Really miss him. Ground ball, second base. And that'll take care of that one. So there's one down. So after uh, that rough second inning, why the Crescent has kind of straightened things out here. And Austin Ross will come up, and we're going to get another trip to the mound. Oh, no. I just said something to him. You can do that. I saw Smoke do that one time. Walked out <laughs> to the white line. If you go across the white line, it's, it's counter a visit. visit. Yep. So he walks out to the white line, and his catcher and his pitcher are standing out there, and he looked like he just got run over by a truck because he <laughs> knew Smokey was coming. And he stood out there at the white line and told him what to do, and then he walked back in the dugout. And I'm, I'm not sure I can repeat some of the things that he said to him that day. So there's a ground ball, this shortstop, and then and now the left-handed shortstop makes the play. You talked about that left-handed shortstop. Just, you know, I, I guess it doesn't make the play. You get the out. It doesn't matter. It just you don't ever see it. It looks funny. Yeah. But but outs are outs, and you'll take them if they're right-handed, left-handed, or both-handed. It doesn't matter. Now with two down, Mitch Foster comes up. He's grounded out and doubled his first two times up. So he will step in on the right-hand side. Here's the wind and the pitch. Inside pitch, ball one. Kiowa County Media Center out of Greensburg, Kansas. They're about 30 miles west of Pratt. And they had a disastrous tornado go through there. I believe in 05, if I remember right. 07. I mean, it it was disastrous. It yeah. took everything. We'll talk about that in just a little bit here. But this Kiowa, com Kiowa community and uh, this Kiowa media operation that we're working with today, a class act from the word go, all volunteers, and look at them up there on a scaffolding 25 <laughs> feet in the air. They're sitting on top of the dugout where it could be real dangerous at yeah. times. And you're out in center field. That guy out there in center field, he's been there all day. And I'll tell you, I don't know if he's had a sandwich out there or not. <laughs> so, but a great bunch of kids to work with. And they're mostly young people, volunteers that do this thing and uh, do a great job. If you've been watching on the internet at all, you, you see the clearness of the pictures in the high def they have. And we're going to take up all the time on the break. So you won't get a commercial in this time. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. There's one of them sitting on top of the dugout. But uh, it's a... Uh, well, I remember a, when I when I first got to school here, we, we drove out. We were going to Dodge City to play, and it was it was the the fall of 08, and there was still a lot of damage there in Greensburg. For a guy, you know, coming out of Kansas City that just saw it on the news, it was, it was pretty devastating. Yes, it was. All and right, we're going to done a heck of a job rebuilding that. That's a, that's a yeah, it's gotten to be quite a city. Beautiful community. Bottom of the fourth, we go and only eight eight runs, eight to nothing, and the eight runs were all put up there in the second inning when the Crescent got themselves in a little trouble, walked one in, and, and got themselves in a little bit of trouble. There is strike one to the hitter, and the hitter is Eric Vaughn. There's the pitch, and it's too low. And that is laced right through the hole between third and short. There's a, a ground ball to left field. And they got a runner on the base pads. Uh, so that's only the third runner on the base pads for this La Crescent, Minnesota team. This is the championship game, by the way. Winner here takes home the big trophy. From the stretch, Weedrum with the pitch, and there's strike one. 
No balls, one strike, or one ball, one strike, I should say. Evan Dorshire. Stretch and the pitch. Here's another one, and it's strike two. Two balls and a strike. With nobody out here, we're in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the stretch and the pitch, the curveball. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what, I'd have been backing out of the box if I <laughs> see that ball coming, but it was inside for ball one. Yeah, that shows a lot of. A lot of toughness been with him sitting in there watching that thing break. Almost got him. 2-2 two, two the count. And there's a, and a foul ball. So we got I actually I gotta I gotta correct it here. It's actually the final game, not they played the championship game already. That's right. This is the just the final game of the tournament. The right. Minnesota team has already got the hardware and, and won the tournament. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they did that in between games. They that runner I is guess I out. It. Yeah, they All they right. had the had some had some uh, roster issues with the South Dakota team that we had okay. to, that we had to work through. All right, uh, that ball was a drop third strike. So he was out because second base was occupied, and the runner took off to second, and threw it away to second. He got all the way to third base. Yes, he did. So it would be, I guess, an error, a two-base error on the catcher. And there. A stolen base and an error on the catcher. Okay, this is a new batter sitting in here. Let me find him real quick. Thorn Sandvin, S-A-N-B-E-N, -E number 12, and now batting. And that one's low. Yeah, the, the team out of South Dakota had a couple of roster issues that I guess we had to work out, and we made that last game the championship game and and uh, just finishing up the tournament with this game. This will I guess they didn't tell me that. Yeah, this will be the, <laughs> the final game, not the championship okay, game. Okay, the final game. My fault, folks. I was not informed of that earlier. The wind up, the pitch, and then ball is slapped to right field. If that stays in, that's and a foul ball. Foul ball. Yeah, I think all that was going on while you were on the air last time. It could have been. On third base for La Crescent, Minnesota. Eric Vaughn. Orange Sandvin. Boy, there's a Swedish name for you. Yeah. And there's strike three called. Threw that fastball right on the outside part of the plate. Couldn't pull the trigger. And that, that one. And now we got another player coming to the plate here. And Boy, I, and they're I getting everybody that, in yeah, this and one. I think that's what, you know, the way the the Minnesota group, they've already won the championship. They're, mm. they're getting everybody, a lot of at-bats, and heck, playing a left-handed shortstop. Trenton Johnson comes up. And that one is a strike one. One ball, one strike. Johnson, and that one is strike two. One oh, and two. two, or one and two the count. One and two. Still nobody out here. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's an eight to nothing ball game. And that pitch is strike three called. And again, kind of got caught standing there looking and the ball hooked right on the inside corner of the plate. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back, eight to nothing. South Dakota leads Minnesota. Uh, is this ball game? Yep, eight to nothing. Fifth inning. That'll be it. I do believe. Or no, wait a minute. Minnesota. Yeah. They get the, Minnesota get the bat or what? What's the, what's the deal here? It's eight, it's eight after eight after five. Eight so after they gotta, five. They got to play. play another inning. Yeah. Okay, they got themselves excited. All right, we'll take a timeout. We'll come back in one minute. This is baseball right here on the media.
Yes, we are back here in Pratt, Kansas. Kiowa County Media, there he is. Live events, professional marketing and education. There's the phone number over on the left-hand side. A new age of communication, and buddy, I'm loving it. <laughs> it's a, uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, and we can Connell Grant come over here and bring the crew, and we'll do some Beaver baseball. Huh, I man? would love that, and I know that our, you know, our, our we have we have parents from kids from Louisiana and Oklahoma and Texas and Colorado and in Missouri. It's a long drive to Pratt for them to come watch us play weekend. I'd, we would sure love to have them anytime they'd want to come. Tristan Anderson will take over around the bump here for the Crescent, Minnesota. The, we're, uh, they might have moved some other guys around too, but uh, yeah, number two's over first base. I, every yeah, time I try already, to, uh, I try to change uh, it back, then <laughs> nobody tells us when yeah. they change it. Well, they're making so many changes, yeah. and, and you know they they've won the the championship, um, and they're, I think they're doing the right thing, getting a lot of kids, a lot of innings, and and letting them have a little bit of fun with it, and and that just makes it a little hard on us, and and that's okay. We'll yeah, it we'll out. take it out. The Crescent, Minnesota, we will be deemed the champion of this tournament this year. Yep, they they First. got their trophy, and and in between the these in between this game and the in the previous game, often. Minnesota, they defeated earlier today, won it last year, so they ran. They were the runner-up, and then so this uh, this one is the final game of the tournament. Again, glad to have you along with us here on on KS or KWKSmedia.org. I know there's some people listening. There's a long fly ball left field and. That will be an out. And Hit that right down. on the screws, and the left fielder had him played perfectly. Didn't even have to take a step. Yep, just reached out there, reached down a little bit, and had it. So, number one out, Jake Patterson, I believe. Yep, number one comes up. <laughs> yeah, you got to start looking at the yeah. numbers that they come up with. They've made so many changes. So, And the pitch. Outside, ball one. Yeah, they brought that big trailer in after five inches of rain. I was hoping that uh, it didn't sink clear to China. Right. Too high. Ball two. One ball, two strikes. As we go to the bottom, uh, the top half of the fifth inning, I should say, with one out. High fly ball. That ball is going to bring rain. Center fielder, cover boy, that. Kind of misjudged that one, but he caught up with it. That ball was in the in the air for a long time. Wiser had out. A, had to make a quick last minute adjustment and got the catch. Wiser out in center field. The wind is turned around and now it is blowing out of the south, which mm -hmm. it normally does here in Pratt, Kansas. And it, this faces northwest northeast. So if you pull it, you can uh, you can send her north a long ways. And that's too high for ball one. Most these kids are high school uh, kids from this, the Crescent. I, I talked to their coach earlier, and mostly high school kids. They got one graduated senior, and the rest of them are play on his high school team. So. One or uh, two balls, no strikes. Yeah, this has got to be fun for these kids to be able to travel and go on the bus and stay in the hotel and and play a little baseball, let their summer go a little longer. That ball went right off the catcher's mitt and got the home plate umpire, Brad McDonald, right in the face mask. Right on, yeah, it looked like it hit right <laughs> on the top rail of it there. Knowing Brad, he's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> so a walk here. And now, we'll, I believe Mitch Hansen's going to walk up here unless he... Changed up. No, we got him. Mitch Hansen, the DH. They're gonna, they're gonna hit they're for gonna, him, I believe. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna hit for him too. So we'll figure out who is, and who's coming in. He won't turn his back to us. We can't see his number. I know. I'll Tall, tell you skinny what, kid though. Uh, number two. two. Okay, number two is coming in to pitch hit. We'll see who this one is. Uh, I think we got it. Lee, Jake, Leon, Lighten. 
Fighting will come in to pitch hit, and you can see him right there kind of warming up on your video. As the coach is talking to Brad McDonald, making the making the, the official changes in the in the roster on the lineup card. <laughs> I tell you what, folks, mark this on your calendar when you see the grass this green in Pratt, Kansas again. <laughs> you know, I and without having to run sprinklers, hardly yeah, at right. All. I know last summer we ran the dog out of our sprinklers out of put our field just to keep it halfway green. All right, now Bertram at first base. There's a fly ball, first pitch hit, and it's in the air. and Caught by the right fielder. Gunt Grove caught it out there, and so that'll be the high fly ball out. So we'll come back after this uh, timeout, and it is an 8 to nothing ball game. Glad to have you with us here on American Legion Baseball. Welcome back, and yeah, there's uh, a little video of that devastation they had over there at Greensburg and what kind of impact it had. So, uh, Doug Ray Chevrolet, our pregame show sponsor, Doug Ray Chevrolet, right here in Pratt, Kansas, your local Chevrolet Cadillac Buick. And we will, uh, we appreciate their help with this as well as. There's the other sponsors that's seen through the out throughout the day. How about that? Brad McDonald's getting a lot of TV time here. Yeah, he the is. We'll have to tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> I told Brad earlier I was going to mic him. <laughs> and I don't then, know if you'd want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went in there and I said, okay, Ma McDonald, who, who's, who's going to be behind the plate? And Brad was because uh, Pinkle told me, and so I kind of razzed him a little bit. There's a right hit out to right field. And, uh, did he trap it? He's he out. It. Got it. Good job. Matt Weiser, Weiser uh, on the fly ball out. And I said, okay, Brad, I walked in there. I said, okay, McDonald, we're going to mic you, and then we're going to have you come out there and put your mask on, and we're going to call you Dark Vader. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy. I've got to know him over my time here in Pratt, and he's a, he's a great supporter of, of the Legion program and, and Pratt Community College Athletics. Levi Massman fouled that first ball off. Well, that's not Levi Massman, and I'll have to find out. <laughs> uh, that's Tristan Johnson. That's who that is. So he'll take the swings here. With no balls, one strike. And well, that was strike three. He fouled yeah, one, took I, that's the breaking right. ball, fouled one off, and swung at strike three, the breaking ball in the dirt there. And Two Minnesota's outs. down here to their last out. If they don't score a run here, this game will be a official run rule. Right. I believe. I don't want to say that. And it, something changes. And the pitch. Strike one. This is Dylan McKinnon. McKinnon. McKinnon, look. That one, the, the curve ball just misses. Gets away from the catcher, but. Just kind of basically right now, just kind of going through the motions, but they still want to play. They still want to win, I'm sure. And well, they also know these are high school kids. They they, they don't want to lose. Yeah, yeah. They... Ball pulled down the third base line, and there's the throw over first, and that will take care of it. And that uh, that is the ball game now. So that will take care of it on the run rule, eight to nothing. Hey, we're going to take a, a time out here. We'll come back we're for some final numbers, and we'll get some final comments from E.T. here, uh, Eric Thompson, and then we'll lock this thing up, and it's been a pleasure being with you. So don't go away. We just, uh, we'll just come back in just a short time here and talk some more. We'll be back right after this one-minute break. This is American Legion Baseball. <laughs> 